Hello and welcome to Kitterk Farms. We're back with another episode of the Flint Hills map by JS Mapping. And we've been gone for quite a while. I've taken a couple of weeks off from YouTube to enjoy time with the family over the holidays, but I'm excited to jump back into things. Uh, a lot has changed since our last episode. We were planting soybeans in field 21 here. And I have allowed the hired workers to finish planting the soybeans. We met here in the middle of this field. And so we've got, uh, let's take a look here. Not a lot of soybeans left, not a lot of fuel left. So we definitely need to bring these tractors back up to the yard and uh, get them refueled and switched over to corn. Because we've got, if we look at the map here, uh, three fields to put corn into. So we'll be putting corn into field 16, field 25, and field 26. And uh, just a reminder, or if you're new to the channel, we are using precision farming in this playthrough. And so um, soybeans don't require nitrogen. So we're not putting any down when we're planting here. Um, we did start to apply some nitrogen with the little bit of slurry that we had in our uh, hog enclosure, but we didn't have enough to even finish our smallest field here. So uh, we're going to come back to that here in the fall. Um, we did not lime ahead of uh, planting here. Um, really just didn't think about it. And if I recall, I'm trying to recall. I don't know if precision farming was out yet when we started this series. I might have added it as we were getting started, but we'll take a look at lime in the fall, I think. So we might have a little bit lower yield this first season than I expect, but um, that's gonna be okay. We've got a lot to do. I'm sure we're gonna make some good money on these fields. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, run these tractors back up to the yard and we'll check back in once we get all the equipment back up there. I think before we fill up the seed here, we need to fill up the diesel and uh, let's go ahead and wash these tractors off. Wow, $555 of fuel cost. I mean, actually, I'm not sure how big the tank is on these and what real um, ag diesel fuel prices are right now. Might not necessarily be that bad, but uh, just from a farm sim perspective, 500 bucks is quite a bit for some. So we're just gonna move this 8RX out of the way and put it out in the main yard, I think, where we will uh, be getting the soybeans emptied out and switching it over to uh, corn here shortly. So I'm just gonna put it right in the middle of the yard here. I think we're gonna do most of our work there today. And we're also going to need to fill up the chemical in there, I just realized. So let me get this tractor pulled up to the fuel barrel here. We'll get it filled up, washed off, and uh, go start getting these things switched over to corn. I did also switch out the tires on this uh, 8960. I put the row crop tires on uh, just because I felt that uh, it matched up a little bit better with actually running a row crop planter. Um, so we're gonna give that a try. I feel like there should be just a little bit more space between these tires, but maybe I'm wrong. I've never actually run one of these in real life. It just feels like the spacing on the tires is a little bit off for row crop, uh, but they are the narrower tires. So we're gonna go with that for now and uh, kind of see how that where that takes us. A thousand dollars in fuel, wow. Uh, oh, we do have the increased fuel mod turned on. That's why I'm uh, using quite a bit more fuel. I think that that feels probably a bit more realistic uh, to me, um, having to use up fuel. I'm not sure how that matches up with just the general economy in FS19, since you can't really compare FS19 costs to real life in a lot of scenarios. So maybe at some point I'll run some numbers on that, but uh, definitely like that we've got some more costs here. We are playing on hard economic difficulty as usual, so uh, this should be a lot of fun. Uh, we haven't checked in since we've been gone so long. How big is our loan? Uh, $1.635 million. So yeah, we've got a fair amount of debt to pay off. Still need to wash that uh, um, digger and put that back in the shed at some point. 
I'm not going to do that just yet. We're going to go ahead and get these uh, uh, planters filled up with everything that they need and switched over to corn. We've almost forgot. We've got this uh, semi sitting out here with the seed tender. We're going to need to bring this back up to the yard and uh, get this all set up with corn and fill up our planters with it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, here we are coming back up to the yard. I think we're going to be able to just pull up here right behind and do most of the work with the... Oh, what is this? Is it an auger or a conveyor? It's probably a conveyor for seed. Not sure, though. But either way, this thing has a lot of flexibility, which is why I like it as a seed tender. Uh, and it's got the little laser dot, so I can kind of get a feel for where I'm uh, going to be putting seed. Although it looks like I'm running a little low on seed. The first part of the hopper is out of seed, so we're definitely running low again. I've already refilled this thing once, I believe. Uh, when we were planting our soybean field. So our soybeans took more than a full hopper of seed here, if I'm not mistaken. So we're just going to have to be keeping an eye on that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just swing this around and we'll park it right here in front of the shed for now. Uh, we shouldn't need it for a little while. Um, I think that filling each of these planters up is going to work for us since we've got a good amount of, uh, what do you call it, um, turning around to do. These fields are a little bit smaller and wider, not wider than field 21, but uh, we're going to be um, doing a lot of shorter rows, so you lose a lot of uh, time on the headlands, so it'll be all right. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to actually get some of these fields done without having to refill at all the two smaller fields. And so what I think we're going to do is fill up the liquid fertilizer. We've got some uh, stuff already set up here, if I'm not mistaken. we got to get in here. Let's turn on the HUD. Yep, we've got liquid fertilizer ready to go. So let's go ahead and make sure both of these are full. The 8RX should already be full because I filled that up and it didn't use anything for soybeans. 8960 here has probably still got to fill things up. So let's see here. Refill. Good deal. We've got to make sure we close up our seed covers here. And then I'm just going to double check the 8RX is indeed full. Close up our seed covers there as well. And I think we're going to leave the nurse trailer here hooked up to the uh, truck just because I almost said Silverado I forget what the NMC is is this a Raptor so we're gonna leave that hooked up and I think what I want to do if we come look at the map here is set up one of the uh, machines here on our largest field and get the worker going on that and then we will come back and hit the smaller fields with the other tractor. What am I doing? Thousands of dollars of repairs. Okay, so yeah, so we're gonna take this 8960 over here to our larger field and see if we can go ahead and get started. Now it looks, do I not have a field entrance here? Hang on a second. There's no field entrance on this end of the field. That seems odd to me. As a farmer, I would put one right there next to my farm. Of course, I guess this wasn't technically a farm. I added this farm, so uh, I probably can't complain too much. So what we'll do, we'll take this down to the other end. Um, it looks like I can get in right here. We need to do headlands, so I think what I'll do is take this down to the other end and uh, run off this headland first and then we'll um, head down to the main road and do those headlands next. So I think we'll just do two passes on this headland. Um, I'm hoping that's enough. I honestly cannot remember uh, from when we did the headlands on the other end or on the other field how many passes I did. And so we're just going to have to retrial and error. That was 
over two weeks ago at this point, and my memory is not what it used to be. Now, we can see that we're applying liquid fertilizer and we have automatic application rate on right now. And so we're applying 140 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare um, to get it into the green zone, which is good. That's uh, what, 398 liters um, right now. Oh, and now we gotta go all the way up to 180. Why is that? Let's take a look at the precision farming screen and oh because we're in a different soil type so this soil type requires more nitrogen uh, than the previous soil type for those crops and then if we look at where's my nitrogen um, so you can see as we pass back into the other crop type we went to a slightly lesser amount that we require um, if I bring up the menu now we're back down to 160 kilograms per nitrogen as our target and so each of the soil types has a different target fertilizer usage that's also based on the crop type. So because I'm planting corn, I have these nitrogen requirements. If I was planting something else, my nitrogen requirements would be different. And so that for me is the really cool thing about precision farming is that uh, it has these different requirements uh, based on crop type. Uh, I'm getting lost in the trees here too much talking not enough driving and so for me um, this precision farming DLC has just been one of the best additions that they've made to uh, farming simulator uh, since uh, they added John Deere equipment I won't lie that's probably been my favorite but getting to uh, have some really cool gameplay mechanics like this has been really awesome and so I'm super looking forward to seeing how the rest of uh, this year in game plays out um, checking our yields, checking out all of these other screens in much more detail. Uh, and I'll be picking up and doing a few more tutorial videos on some of the other mechanics of both precision farming and also course play. I've had a lot of requests for covering some of the different modes in course play that I haven't covered yet. And so we're going to be checking those out uh, for sure. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas on uh, doing some course play uh, tutorials around how to uh, set up the manure spreader to come back and automatically pick up manure and or how to set somebody up to deliver manure to the field so that the uh, manure spreader can just get its manure right there on the edge of the field which will be kind of cool so with this we've done two headland passes on this end i think what i want to do is send this guy up to the other end of the field and we'll do two headland passes up there and then we'll um, let a worker handle this for us. And then uh, from there, we will get the 8RX set up and on another field so that we can get the rest of this corn in uh, hopefully pretty quickly. All right, we're back up on the other end of the field and uh, getting this headland in here real quick. And we're gonna be able to uh, let the worker take over from here, I think, which will be a good thing. And I'm super looking forward to switching over to the 8RX a little bit here as well. We've been in this 8960 quite a bit over the last several episodes, which is fine. This is a great mod. I love uh, the mods that Sid Modding has been putting out lately. Cannot wait to try out the X9 Combine on this uh, map. We are definitely going to be... Uh, looking to work with the dealer to get a demo unit out here on the farm. I uh, might be cheesy, but uh, can't pass up the chance to use a cool new mod like that uh, on a series like this. But I have to admit, the 8RX is my favorite tractor in farm sim right now. Uh, I have not yet gotten a chance to see one in real life. I, I, I take that back. I've seen one. I haven't gotten a chance to get inside of one yet. And so that is what I would really like to get a chance to do at some point here. I know I have at least one buddy who I think is going to give me an opportunity to do that at some point in 2021 here. So I am looking forward to getting back out into uh, Minnesota to visit some friends and getting into uh, some nice actual farm machinery later this year. So stay tuned for uh possibly some videos on that if i get that opportunity i think that'd be something 
fun to share with everybody. And uh, for whatever reason, that made me just think of uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention in this video is I did switch out my shaders again. And so you might have seen I did a tutorial on uh, how to make some changes to the Seasons mod to improve the colors and lighting system um, using Oxygen David's method that uh, he put into, I believe, uh, what's the name of the map? Shamrock Valley. Uh, I apologize if that's not the name of the map. I uh, don't have it up in front of me, but um, Shamrock something. Anyhow, um, I did a video on how to install that onto into Seasons, and uh, it really helped with the colors, but I've since come across uh, this shader pack that somebody linked to me in uh, the Discord server, and uh, I'm really liking the colors on this, so... I needed to try it out in an episode because for whatever reason, by the time I'm done processing things in YouTube and uploading or processing them and then uploading them to YouTube, everything seems to look just a little bit different uh, after all the compression and other things happen. So uh, I figured the best way to try these out would be to just do a video with it, see how they look. And uh, if I like it, I'll keep tweaking from there. If I don't like it, I'll keep looking for something better. I've seen a lot of great shaders out there. Um, I know a lot of people are big fans of uh, KMN shaders. I'm not a fan of that just because they're using such an old version of Reshade. And uh, it's just a very, I don't know, manual kind of janky process to install them. I'm not a big fan of uh, random DLLs that I don't know what's been done to them getting installed on my PC. So. Uh, I have installed Reshade uh, right from the Reshade site and played around with that a little bit as it is open source and taking a look at what that's doing. Uh, there's a lot of configuration available there, so uh, it's going to take me a while before I get comfortable enough understanding what all the options are to start putting together my own uh, shader configs. Once I do kind of master that, which I'm hoping to do at some point, and you can just see all the colors just changed because of where I'm standing and the type of light I have. I'd really like to get this color to stick around all the time as opposed to this more, um, I don't know, it uh, old timey type coloring that I get um, based on where the sunlight is coming from. So um, this much better without the, uh, the yellowing hue. I really like this view where I've got the nice blue skies and the green and the trees in the background. So we're gonna keep playing around with it until I figure out how to get that all working a little bit better. In the meantime, it looks like this guy is all ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and let the worker take over planting corn in this big field. And we're gonna head back over to the farm and get started on a different field here real quick. Uh, it helps when you're in the right map mode. I don't know if anybody else has been having similar problems uh, adjusting to things in uh, precision farming, but I keep getting tricked by the new tab and wanting to try and click into my equipment there. I almost wish they would just hide the equipment dots on that version of the map since you can't interact with them. But it's not that big of a deal. I just need to retrain my brain a little bit uh, to stop uh, clicking on something that isn't going to do anything for me. Now, the one other thing that I didn't check before we got out of that 8960 was how much seed and chemical we still have in there. So I think as long as we're right here, I'm going to jump out and try and catch this guy just so that we can see what's going on. Whoop, whoop. And if we take a quick look here, wow, we're almost out of uh, liquid fertilizer. So I think what we need to do is, as long as we're coming down here closer to the farm, what I'd like to do is actually just stop this worker right here. And we're going to go grab that seed tender, not the seed tender. We're going to go grab that um, nurse trailer and bring it over to the field here and just throw some chemical into uh, the planter just to keep him going for a little bit while we go and get started on the next field. And then by the time he runs out of seed, he's going to need more chemical again. So it should work out really well and we'll be able to uh, keep him going for a little bit, maximize our efficiency here. 
I do really like this nurse trailer too. Uh, we had something similar to this when we were on the farm. We uh, converted our grain truck to put big chemical tanks in the back of it at one point, but we also had a little nurse trailer like this with the uh, mixing uh, hopper here in the front, a little gas motored pump, so that's pretty cool. There is a manure system version of this nurse trailer as well, I believe. Um, I'm not running the manure system on this playthrough just because I've had some problems uh, with the hoses from time to time, and so I'm taking a little bit of break from that uh, in this series. We may reintroduce it later, but uh, just for now, um, we're going to take it easy. I just don't want to leave this truck sitting in the middle of the field like that, so we're going to just put it right over here and get back to taking this planter up to field 16 here and getting a start on planting corn up there. It's a pretty small field. Well, it's not that small, I guess, but it's a little bit irregularly shaped, so... I think we'll take the headlands off there and then maybe see what a worker can do while we uh, go and get the seed tender and stuff set up. I'm hoping I can get this uh, planter to a point where the worker can do a little bit on his own so that I can go and keep that 8960 running here in a little bit. But with that, let's go ahead and uh, maybe cut into a little bit of a time lapse while I take off these headlands. You can see here that uh, while I'm targeting the full 200 kilograms per hectare in this field for nitrogen with corn and in uh, sandy loam that I'm not actually applying nearly as much uh, nitrogen as I was in the other field uh, primarily because this is a uh, part of the strip where I already put down the uh, hog slurry so if we pop in here and look at the precision farming map up here you can see I'm following that same course that we already did, so uh, I'm putting down a lot less nitrogen on this pass than I did in the other field, which will be awesome because it'll go just a little bit further in this tractor. So we'll see how that ends up actually working out for us. But it's super exciting to see the effects of uh, precision farming in play here. One thing I really want to do is find a way to show all of that precision farming part on the screen without the rest of the help menu. So maybe that's a mod that I need to toss together here one of these days. Because I really don't like having to look at all the other uh, help menu stuff, but I really like seeing that precision farming screen. Either way, we'll let's jump back into a bit of a time lapse here as we take off these headlands and we'll check back in in a bit. So we should have enough of the headland for this guy to turn around, especially given that there's a big grass patch here on the uh, other end of this field. So I did two passes by the highway just because those cars are a bit crazy. And it looks like our other tractor has just stopped. 
So I'm going to turn off GPS so I can enable my helper real quick here. He's got plenty of seed for a bit. And we're going to jump on over here to our other tractor who has run out of both fertilizer and corn. All right, so we have uh, filled the 8960 back up with seed and also uh, put a little bit of a uh, liquid fertilizer in here, but we've run out of uh, liquid fertilizer. So we're going to have to make a run up to the co-op with the truck, get a little bit more fertilizer and figure out how much seed we're going to need uh, to finish these fields. I think we've got enough in the seed tender, but it's going to be close because these planters seem like they're holding 120 plus bushels of seed. I don't think we've got that much left in the seed tender, maybe three, four or 500 bushels tops. So uh, we've got a couple of refills for both planters still in there, but it's not going to be enough to really um, do all of these fields, I think. Uh, we'll see. This last field is a little bit bigger than it looks. And so we'll see how far we can get in field 16 here with one uh, full planter. I don't think we're going to finish this field by any stretch of the imagination because we're already at 50% seed used and we've definitely not done 50% of this field yet. So uh, we're going to let these guys go a little bit here and see how far we can get on planting. And uh, this is probably a good spot to wrap up this episode. Uh, it's been a little bit of a, a getting back into the swing of things. I have been gone for a while. So for that, I do apologize. But we're going to be rocking and rolling here in 2021. Expect a lot of new things on the channel coming soon. I'll be posting some videos about uh, some of the upcoming things I want to do. Live streams are coming soon, hopefully by the end of this month. And uh, yeah, come join us on the Discord server. There's a lot going on there. Great community of people. That's all for today. Kederk.